This is um, kinetic energy, and it's this, if this is the first time you're taking these notes, like period one, you're going to be on um, topic 18, and uh, this is actually page 18, and this is topic four. So once again, this is topic four on page 18 in your notebook. And uh, the first idea is kinetic energy is energy in a moving object. So it's a measure of how much work a moving object can do, is kind of another way to put it. And do we have our review? Is our review on this page? Let's go back a little bit. No. There's our vocab. Let's see. Nope. I don't have it. Sorry, guys. So we want to understand the connection between work and energy. There's going to be three topics, three questions on this part of the test. Identify and solve uh, the energy contained in moving objects and apply the kinetic energy formula. All right. And the first thing you know is, well, kind of stuff we always need to know. Here's the formula. Kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared divided by two. The units of mass are kilograms. Velocity is in meters per second. This is worth knowing because if you do have to convert to grams, grams divided by a thousand equals kilograms. Or you take uh, grams and you move the decimal one, two, three to the left, and that would be 0 0.105 kilograms. Grams divided by 1,000 is kilograms. And one question you'll have to ask is, given this formula, what will result in a bigger change in kinetic energy? Doubling the mass or doubling velocity? And why? Uh, and the bigger one is, well, it's doubling velocity because velocity is impacted by the square, which makes sense. Because after all, kinetic energy is all about the energy in moving objects. So velocity is much more important in how much work a moving object can do. Uh, another thing that we have here is, if so imagine uh, we want one question is going to be on the relationship between work and energy. It's called the work energy theory, theorem. If we have a car at rest, and we speed it up to going really, really fast. Uh, what does the work on the car so that the speed could change? What's doing work, right? What's doing, what's applying a force over a distance to make the car go faster? And the answer is the engine. And even more importantly, we know that the amount of work done has to equal the total change in energy of an object. Or, work equals the change in energy. So I, if I know kinetic energy at rest equals zero, and then kinetic energy over here equals uh, a gazillion, the change is from zero to a gazillion, so that means there had to have been that much work done by the engine in order to speed it up. Or you could say that it would take that much work by the brakes to slow it back down to zero. So if you want to change the kinetic energy of an object, work has to be done. And this is this whole idea of you do work to change energy to do work to change energy. Let's look at another example. Here's a review, a work against gravity review. How much work does it take to lift the ball to the top of the ramp? I want you Sorry. I want you to be able to do this. So pause this video and try this. If the height is 2 meters and the mass is 20 kilograms. Here's the answer. Uh, work equals force times distance. We don't know the force, but we do know that we're working against gravity, which is mass times 9.8. So 20 times 9.8 times a distance of 2 meters. 196 times 2 
is 392 joules. So if you do that much work to lift it, gravity will do that much work as it pulls it down the ramp. And at the very bottom, it will have that many joules of kinetic energy when it gets there. So we have this like cycle of work being done to create energy. It took energy to lift it, to do the work, so it rolls down and has more energy again. So this is this like cycle of work and energy. And finally, let's do a, a quick mathematical example to do two things. One, practice a formula and to two, understand just how much bigger of an impact velocity has. Would you rather be hit by a thousand kilogram truck with a velocity of one, or a half kilogram bullet with a velocity of a thousand? Which can do more work on your body when it hits you? If it has more energy, it can do more work at impact. Kinetic energy equals mass times velocity squared over two, so this is a thousand times one squared over two, which equals 500 joules. The bullet is 0 0.5 times 1,000 squared divided by two. This is a million times 0 0.5 is 500,000 divided by two. So it's 250,000 joules. That's why if you get hit by a truck going about walking speed, you'll have a bruise. If you get hit by a bullet going super fast, you'll have a giant hole in your body. Um, so this is has more energy, so it can do more work when it hits something. That's what kinetic energy is all about. And velocity is much more important. How much more important? The last, this is the last notes. The relationship between mass and velocity. They're both directly related. But kinetic energy is directly related to mass. So if you double mass, then kinetic energy doubles. If you cut mass in half, then the kinetic energy will reduce by half. But kinetic energy is directly related to velocity squared. So if you have twice the mass, four times the energy. Four, sorry, twice the velocity. Four times the velocity is 16 times the energy. One third the velocity equals one ninth kinetic energy and so on so this relationship is much bigger because though that makes sense kine is Greek for movement this is all about moving energy so the velocity the movement part is more important okay there are some uh, after you've taken these notes um, there is a work review worksheet on the home page. I want you to do that because um, there's definitely some room for improvement based on your quiz scores. And then there's a kinetic energy worksheet that I want you to watch after you see the topic 5 video.